Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the old masturbator, Scott Bradfield, speaking to you directly from the bathtub, the metaphorical bathtub of our imaginations, where we read books for no reason whatsoever, except to have a good time and avoid paying too much attention to the shitstorm of our current world. And uh, we can gotta do it for an hour or so every day, or else you're gonna go crazy. So that's the basic. Our basic premise is you gotta do you gotta do some time in the bathtub, or you can't get out there otherwise. And uh, you can tell your you can tell all your family when they ask, "What are you doing, honey? What are you doing in the in the office watching those YouTube videos with your headphones on?" You say, "I'm listening to the old masturbator, and he's masturbating endlessly about books." This week we have Christmas creeping up on us. We're gonna have another sip. I have my special purple shirt. I, I never change this shirt anymore. I'm just going to wear it all the time. And I have my martini, my Manhattan and my martini glass. And we're going to, we're trying to clear the shelves. I have like a table next to my chair, my broken reading chair, where I keep books I'm reading or books I finished reading that I want to talk about in the bathtub. And I don't, uh, and eventually, recently the pile has got really unwieldy. It's starting, it's like, it looks like one of those, uh, What's that game you play, uh, Tower or whatever it's called, Jenga? It's starting to look like Jenga. So I'm trying to get rid of a lot of this stuff. I wanted to do longer pieces, but I'm going to do very quick ones on a number of these books so that we can do a, a, a series of Christmas cracker editions really soon for our Christmas, our, our highly anticipated Christmas shows. Today I want to talk, and this is not to... Um, these, these are significant books I want to do. I want to really do uh, one of my favorite... One of my favorite people when I was a young man was Avram Davidson, and a writer who I've liked and disliked and not, I can't say disliked, liked and didn't understand sometimes and liked at other times. And I've gone back to re read him again. And for the first time, really, since I was 17, 16, 17 years old when I knew him. And uh, I'm really enjoying reading him now. I think I understand. He, you really do need a bit, you need a bit of age and a bit more patience than I had when I was 16 or 17 to get the, the real greatness of some of Avram's work. And I want to talk a little bit about Avram today and then we'll... We'll move on. Uh, so I read a couple of short story collections. These are ones you can get secondhand in various places. There is uh, there's a website. I'm going to put a link to it below, by, being put out by his godson, I believe, and his son. And, and they're they're doing a they do a lot of stuff on Facebook and they do lots of interviews about Avram. Um, but uh, I'll put that below in case you're interested. And in, in a lot of they're, they're doing lots of audio books of Avram's stuff. But I haven't been listening to most of those. I've just been going back in some of these old books. Strange Seas and Shores. This came out when I knew Avram in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, this is called Collected Fantasies, edited by John Silversack, an important genre editor for many decades. Um, and this is kind of a nice paperback. I read both of these short story collections. Um, they, they have some crossovers. There's a number of repeated stories. Um, this has got some great Avram Davidson stories, but I think that I personally feel that there's a lot of problems with this edition. Here comes, here comes Lucky. Um, so there's some problems with this edition, so I sort of recommend, if anything, Collected Fantasies, because that's some of his best his best stuff in there. Um, I It has, for example, um, does it have? It has some of the kind of mysteries and weird stuff. There's, one of the things about an Avram Davidson story is that there's a whole bunch of stuff happening. There's just, Lucky, you want to say hi? Come on. Come on, up, up, up. Okay. Lucky has to come say hi for a minute. Okay. She thinks when she hears me talk on this, she does seem to think it's time to wrestle. Um, Collected Fantasies is worth getting secondhand. I'm sure you get it fairly cheap. And it gives you some of his most famous stories. And all I can say is, is when, or, or All the Seas with Oysters is Avram's most famous story. That's where the paper clips gestated the coat hangers and the coat hangers gestated the bicycles. And then a lot of the more characteristic of Avram's stories, which are very long, complex novelettes, which often center on some sort of historical information, some really, because Avram was packed with weird historical information. Um, does this have the one? Uh, it, does, it doesn't. Well, Lord of Central Park is very funny. There's a wonderful story here called The Dragon Skinned Drum, which is based on some of Avram's experiences in China uh, during just at the end of World War II. Some wonderful stories in here. You have to be very patient. There's a lot happening in these stories, and he brings them all together at the end. I, I think I don't know of another writer like him. The main thing I wanted to talk about, though, was I did go back to read a book I read when I was very young and I enjoyed as a young man, but which I was much too young to really appreciate. This is The Phoenix in the Mirror. This is what's considered Avram's greatest book, 
and that's fair. It is easily his greatest book. I've always found his prose could be sometimes a little too ornate, a little too lapidary, a little too uh, filled with peculiarities and oddnesses of information in comics. There's, there's sometimes two or three jokes in one of Adam's sta- uh, sentences and two pieces of information, of infer- interesting factual historical information. And it's sometimes a little hard to follow some of his stories. This is true as, of this book as well, but it is one of the most, the best written fantasies I've ever read. It is an extremely ornate, complicated, unusual book. Isn't that a beautiful old copy? That's the old Ace Science Fiction editions. That is one of the most beautiful paperbacks I've ever seen. Um, the, it's based on uh, Vir- the poet Virgil. So you know the famous poet Virgil. But a lot of mythology that grew up around Virgil, because he was supposed to be a very learned man who was involved with all sorts of learned people of his period, and it's set in, in Italy. I forget, I forget already what city it's in. I want to say it's Naples, but I can't remember now. Um, and he was supposed to be a magician. He was supposed to have all sorts of mystical uh, knowledge, and he had a library almost as good as mine, which was filled with ornate or, and archaic information. It starts very quick. The prose is extraordinary. Every paragraph of this book is very unusual, very beautifully written. It, ta- it, it covers a period of time from the beginning in which uh, Virgil, is, Virgil is basically forced to work for a woman to build a virgin mirror. So he has to build a virgin mirror. What he means by that is it's a mirror that no one's ever looked into made out of virgin materials. What a strange idea. It's filled, I, I would say almost every paragraph is filled with some idea, and it's often from historical and archaic historical uh, lore that uh, Avram has kind of compiled. I don't know where, he, he must, he just had, I knew when I knew him he was like this, he just remembered everything. He has to compose a virgin mirror for this, this lady so that she can find her daughter. It's a very complicated story, so I won't tell you more than that, but that's the premise of it. And he's got to find, create this mirror, and it's about all the adventures he goes on to obtain the materials for this mirror. And there's lots of kind of fantastic adventures along the way. But then there's often long set, long passages describing alchemical um, preparations, and every sentence is about the kind of physical reality of this kind of alchemist, these alchemists working in this laboratory of Virgil's to produce this virgin mirror. There's some long passages like that which are really worth paying attention to because they're just so well written and so clearly well well researched. At the same time, it's not just a research book. There's this interesting story running through it. And you've got to pay attention to all the different little characters that show along, show up along because there are times, particularly when I was younger, I thought some of these characters weren't important and I didn't quite see the importance of them, but everything pays off in this book. And in most Avram stories, they pay off, but never so clearly and so intricately as they do in this lovely book. Um, Avram was going to supposedly going to write a series of these books, but he was always worried about, he always had to make money, and, and he was always doing things for money, and writing lots of books for money, and writing stories. So he, he did write a sequel, he wrote two sequels, which were available in various editions, but, and I haven't read them, but if you're interested in fantasy novels, over Christmas, this is a good time to read this this great book. And you can get possibly this beautiful edition on eBay. I know it's available on uh, on Kindle. I know there's Kindle editions. And you can check out the Avram Davidson website, which I'm going to put a link to below. But really, he was an extraordinary and a real original American writer. And of the kind of classics fantasy novels, uh, I, I do feel this is this has been unfairly forgotten. This really should be recovered and remembered because it may be it may be easily one of the greatest American fantasy novels and most unusual American fantasy novels. So the Phoenix in the Mirror, Avram Davidson, have a great uh, have a great uh, day. Uh, stay stay safe in the bathtub. Uh, don't come out unless I tell you to because because there's nothing there's nothing outside. I've told you this before. Don't go outside. There's nothing out there. You don't need to leave. The pandemic is, is Perfect is doing perfectly well without any of us. Just stay at home and stay safe. Happy bathing.